Hi everyone, a bit of a different video today. Now my question to you is this. You know how astronomers go and actually observe the universe? They actually use telescopes to learn about the universe. My question to you is, have you ever wondered how they do that? Have you ever wondered what that looks like? Now, you've heard about, you know, the massive telescopes that, you know, um, Australia has as well as overseas. You've heard about all these telescopes that are absolutely massive. And have you ever thought about how they actually use them? Of course, we know that they can't just go and, you know, look through the eyepiece like you would with a telescope that you have at home. So how do astronomers actually observe the universe? So what I'm going to be doing is basically vlogging my experience of this event. So Ben, who has been lecturing the course, as you know, he is an observer and he has an observing run coming up this weekend. Currently it's a Thursday, so he's going Saturday night, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday night. And I'm going to follow along and be there on one of those nights to record uh, for you what it actually looks like to be an astronomer that observes. So I hope you enjoy and I will see you very soon. Hi everyone, it's Saturday and I'm at uni, it's about 3 p.m. and I'm about to go meet up with Ben so we can go pick up some food for tonight. Uh, we need snacks because we're going to be trying to stay awake all night. So that's what I'm about to do now and let's go do it. in the remote observing room. What is going on? I can see we've got a screen here that is connected to uh, some other remote location. So can you explain to us what's going yeah. on? Yeah, so we're using a very fancy technological thing you might not have heard of before. It's called Zoom. Wow. Yeah, uh, and we are connected to uh, the remote observing room. Uh, we are in the remote observing room. We're connected to the physical observing room up in Kunabarabran. Uh, and so the, the telescope is directly above this room. Uh, and if we were there in person, we would be sitting at those monitors right now, uh, getting ready to start. Uh, but we're here doing it remotely. Uh, and so we're waiting for some staff at the telescope to give us the all clear that we can start taking afternoon calibrations. Okay, cool. Well, let's hope we have someone rock up to um, Coonabarabran very soon. Yeah, and, and any minute. Yeah, cool. And we will chat again soon. Sounds great. Okay, so it's about 9.30, uh, the sun's just gone down and you, we've hit appropriate darkness now such that um, the first exposures of the first targets or the first um, stars are being observed. So yeah, I'm going to refill the water bottle and stuff. We've just had dinner and now begins the first of Hopefully what will be a lot of observing tonight, so we'll get back to it. Okay, Ben, tell us what we're doing and why we're here. <laughs> so What's happening? It's about 10 o'clock on a Saturday evening here. Uh, we're observing our first stars of the night. Started about an hour ago. Things are going all right so far. Uh, so we are observing for the GALA survey, uh, which is an acronym for the Galactic Archaeology with Hermes. Uh, Hermes is itself an acronym, but that's not worry about that. Things get complex real fast. Uh, 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 it's a survey that's aiming to measure spectra of about a million stars in the southern sky uh, to look at their chemical abundances, what elements they have in their atmospheres, uh, uh, and how that changes as a function of age to understand how the galaxy formed. Wow, that sounds very cool. So what are you actually observing? in these stars tonight? Yeah, so over tonight we'll observe about 1,500 stars, uh, not sequentially, there's not that many minutes in the night, but we observe about 300 stars at a time and we'll observe five fields, uh, looking at um, 29 different elements in the spectra. So do you expect tonight to be a successful night? What counts as a successful night and what counts as an unsuccessful night? Yeah, well, it's always relative to expectations. Uh, the weather forecast before we started this run looked really bad for tonight. So in some sense, any, any photons we get are a bonus. 
Um, but if we can get a few different fields, uh, observe a few hundred stars, uh, that'll be great. Uh, and we have four nights here, so hopefully by the end of these four nights we'll have observed something like 15,000 stars. Our goal's a million over a few years, and so every little bit counts. Definitely. So what monitor are you looking at most when you observe something? Do you get the results straight away? Is it, is it instantaneous? What are, which screen are you looking at? Yeah, so mostly I look at the one right here with these green bars that says what's the status of uh, the current observation. Uh, and so we take data for 30 minutes at a time. This is in seconds, 1800 seconds. And you can see this one has about 415 seconds to go. Uh, so those are going along so I can see the status that everything looks okay. Information on uh, what time it is, uh, when the moon will rise, when the moon will set, when twilight will start so we can make sure we're on track. Uh, and then we keep over here whether uh, uh, the all sky camera near the telescope and so you can see uh, up here at the top there's some clouds rolling in. We're going to hope those don't get here too quickly but they are moving this way. Uh, and pretty much it. Eight monitors, all you need. Um, I guess the last question I have for now is when it goes, well, if it goes cloudy and it looks like some clouds are coming, if it goes cloudy, um, do you get to observe another night or is it just, that's it, too bad? Yeah, we've got uh, the iPad right here. If it gets cloudy, we turn on some Netflix and hope for the best. Uh, are they sponsoring this? Do we get money if we say that? I don't uh, think so. All right. Well, we'll turn on some um, streaming media of choice then. Uh, we're open Disney Plus for sponsorship. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's most of them just better luck next time. So we proposed for time on the telescope. Um, you know, we asked for a certain number of nights this semester. It's run on six month uh, at a time chunks. We got these nights, and if anything we get to use them for is great, and if it doesn't work out, we ask for time in a future semester saying, you know, can we have some more? We, we got some bit and we need some more to finish our science goals. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, do the best with what, what you get, and if you uh, get lucky and the weather's great and you have extra time at the end, uh, you know, you get a little extra science, uh, if the weather's not great, better luck next semester. Cool. Well, I guess we'll keep on going for now and we'll check in again soon. Sounds great. Call us Disney Plus. <laughs> What's the time? About uh, midnight? Uh, it's midnight, right on the button. Okay, it's midnight and we've just stopped. Yeah, here we are. Uh, so uh, things are going really well and then uh, about 10 minutes ago some clouds rolled in. Uh, you can see them on our all sky cam. Uh, and so uh, now we just get to do the fun bit of waiting and watching the sky and hoping for the best. Uh, they came in pretty suddenly, I think, and the, the night assistant at the telescope also thinks they might leave pretty quickly. Uh, so hopefully we don't lose too much time, but right now we're in a holding pattern. So what, what um, part were you up to? So we observed our first field for the night. Uh, things went well there. Uh, and we're halfway through our second field uh, when this uh, cloud rolled in. Okay, do you think it's going to be super disruptive if it passes over quickly or...? Well, I, we can't do anything while it's here, so we'll hope for the best. Uh, we're um, about 10 minutes behind right now. It should be fine uh, if the clouds you know, go through and we lose half an hour or an hour, we lose half an hour or an hour. It happens. You can't really... Uh, you can't really fight it, and so uh, we just make the best of whatever happens. Perfect. Yeah. Let's see if it uh, let's see if it improves. We'll see here. Uh, hopefully, uh, if things go back soon and we can see the sky again, we will uh, keep observing the same fields. Uh, and if we're here more than an hour or so, this field will start setting on the sky, and so we'll try to get this field one other night this week and instead move on to a new field. Perfect. Let's see how it goes. Sounds great. Okay, so um, it's almost 5 a.m. Can you 
give us an update on what's happened in the last like five hours. Yeah, so last time we were talking was right around midnight uh, and we had a few clouds. Uh, we opened up again after that. They blew out after about 20 minutes. Uh, but if you look over at our all sky camera right now, uh, you don't see a lot of stars uh, in the field of view. You see a lot of clouds uh, and it moves and refreshes about every 10 seconds. We'll see them move. There they go. Uh, that's not what you want to see if you're trying to observe the stars. Uh, it's a cloudy and starting to become foggy night out there. Uh, and so uh, we've mostly been you know, looking at our thumbs as we twiddle them, waiting for uh, the skies to open again. So not the most exciting night, unfortunately. Uh, lots of clouds and waiting and not taking data. But that happens sometimes. There's not much we can do to control it. Is the weather looking better for tomorrow? Well, uh, for being totally honest, not really. Uh, it's looking uh, a lot like tonight. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some data, uh, but we're probably not gonna be observing the full night. Uh, but we'll find out. You know, we've been surprised before. Uh, Kuna Barabran is up in the hills and uh, you know, the, the weather is not super predictable there. And so sometimes you think it's gonna be super cloudy and you get a great night. So we'll see. Hi everyone. So turns out that it's really difficult to um, stay awake. I couldn't stay awake the whole night. Um, between 2 and 4 a.m. I was asleep. So I tried, but it's really difficult. It's a quiet room. You're doing things every half an hour or so, and it's just too easy to drift off to sleep. So fortunately, I couldn't make it. Um, the weather's looking okay for tonight, not great, so we'll see how it goes and I'll come back and try and film some more. Monday, Tuesday are looking bad though, so not going to worry about those. We'll see how we go tonight and the sun's going to be rising. We'll see how we go. Hi everyone, it's Sunday evening here. It's coming up to 6.30. And we're back in the remote observing room for another night of observing. I'm here with Ben and he's about to tell us what the night is going to look like. So tonight is at the surface level looks a lot like last night. Every Galan night doesn't look too different. Uh, we're going to observe fields of about 300 stars uh, each, each time. Uh, in the summer, we can do four or five fields. We're getting a little bit into late summer now, so five is, is doable. Uh, in the winter, because the nights are longer, we can do something more like seven or eight fields. Uh, and so like last night, we'll start with a field uh, in Orion, the constellation. Um, a lot of young stars over there. Uh, and then we'll move on to fields in the southern sky. Each one has about 300 stars in it. So if everything goes well, that's something like 1,500 stars we'll get spectra for over the night. Uh, the goal for Galaz, a million spectra over five years or so. Uh, and so this, this will be some, some big steps towards that. The only risk we have is that the weather doesn't look amazing, uh, which you know, was in the forecast. I think we said that last night. Um, the forecast has panned out more or less. Uh, the telescope is just outside of Kuna Barbaran over here. Uh, and uh, all the white is clouds blowing up over the past couple hours uh, and some storms moving in from South Australia. Uh, there's a little turn on the rain. There's a little bit of rain in the area. So we'll see how well things go. We might lose some time uh, due to clouds, uh, but we'll hang out and see what happens and get as much data as we can. Okay, Ben, it's Monday morning. Can you fill us in on what happened last night? The night started out great. Uh, we had really clear skies, good seeing, uh, but we could see on the radar that clouds were coming. So it was you know, never gonna last, uh, we, which we saw at the start of the night as well uh, when we were talking previously. Uh, made it through the first field wonderfully. Second field, about two thirds of it uh, was just fine when the clouds started rolling in. Uh, and around midnight, 12.30, it got too heavy. Uh, we waited out a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about remote observing uh, is you know, when you're waiting, you have anything you need. So we you know, watched a movie, uh, waited for the clouds to, to blow away, um, but they didn't and it started raining and became clear we wouldn't open before the end of the night. So we called it at that point. Are you disappointed? Well, it happens. It's you know, something you can't control, right? The weather's gonna do what the weather's gonna do. Uh, so between the last two nights, we got uh, you know, something like five fields. Um, all we could do, the telescope worked well. We did the best with what we could. So you know, 
go go back next time and try again. You have two more nights. What are you expecting for the next two nights? Uh, expecting a lot of clouds. Uh, I think we've gotten all the data we're going to get, unfortunately. Uh, but maybe we'll get lucky. Last night, the forecast said it'd be you know, cloudy until midnight and then a chance afterwards. And exactly the opposite happened. So who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Fingers crossed. Fingers, okay. Fingers crossed. Thanks very much for letting us come along to yeah. watch you observe. Yeah, see you next time. Morning everyone. It's Sunday morning. It's <laughs> Monday morning. Morning everyone. It is Monday morning. It's almost 7 a.m. Um, I obviously didn't make it through the whole night. Well, I didn't, but it didn't matter in the end because there was not much to do after sort of like 1 a.m. anyway. So feeling uh, not too bad today. And um, I guess I just really hope that you enjoyed um, coming along and seeing what it's like to do some actual observing as an astronomer. And I hope you get something out of the video and we'll see you next time.